So a lot of people have been asking me this, whether it's in my personal life or just here on YouTube. I'm actually recording this video in Mexico right now. I'll be here for a couple more days. I really enjoy going to Mexico. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of interesting things that I find fascinating. First of all, I'm just like a weird traveler, and I've mentioned this before in my other channels that I like to be culture shocked. I like to experience something just completely different than what I'm used to, uh, which is actually kind of a big reason why I don't travel too much inside of the U.S. I do, but when I do try to go outside of the U.S., I try to go as far as possible. I'm from L.A. I've pretty much grown up. That's all I really know is L.A. And I think that actually is an interesting backstory and some good context to why I enjoy Mexico, going to Mexico so much. Uh, I grew up in L.A., so I grew up on... I mean, obviously, L.A. has is heavily influenced by Mexico still to this day. I mean, obviously, it used to be a part of Mexico. We talk about that all the time historically. Uh, but so I've always like been interested in that stuff. It wasn't until about last year where I, I had gone for the first time and it kind of blew my mind because before I had gone to Mexico for the first time, I had traveled by plane on like a 13 hour flight to Europe to be like massively culture shocked. Like I went from LA to Paris and to feel that like massive culture shock, it took like a 12 to 13 hour plane ride. And then maybe about six months later, I went to Mexico for the first time and it was literally a two hour drive. And that just blew my world because I didn't realize how much of like a an alien planet it could be. You know what I mean? Like that sounds kind of funny, but I didn't realize something so close could give me that same feeling. And I love to dive into that stuff and just learn everything that I can. And that's that's pretty much where my channels here on YouTube stem from. I, I really like just immersing myself into a new culture and a new language, which is a whole other element of also why um, I've been enjoying going to Mexico, why I try to spend as much time here in either Mexico or uh, if you've been watching my videos on the main channel, I spent like three to four weeks in, in Spain last year. I've been really actively trying to uh, learn Spanish and maybe I'll make a video about that um, at some point here on this channel. I can, I've really been wanting to, uh, I could, I could do this same video at this point entirely in Spanish, but <laughs> first of all, I mean, you know, if you don't speak Spanish, you're not gonna be able to understand me, but it's going to, I'm not going to be able to properly express my emotions. And I'm also going to probably commit a lot of errors. So I've been wary of, I try not to speak Spanish on video too much because I'm, you know, I, I know every month I get better and better. So I know that if I make a video in Spanish, I'm going to look back on it literally in like two or three months and, and I'm going to cringe because like the learning process is like, I, I have videos in my phone that where I'm speaking Spanish from like six months ago and I can't, I'm like, oh my God, it's actually so bad. So, um, so that's a whole other aspect of it is, um, I really like countries that don't speak English. I'm really finding that fascinating. And because I chose Spanish to, to learn, I mean, I took Spanish in high school, but I pretty much forgot it all. And then I started to really immerse myself. You know, that, that that's really huge. You know, like everyone that I talk to wants to learn Spanish, but are you willing to... I think it's interesting because it's been a fun journey as someone that never grew up on a second language. I, I'm a little bit jealous of the people that, you know, especially Europeans, but obviously Mexican-Americans or French-Americans or German-Americans. Like if you were raised on a second language, it's it kind of just is given to you and you're kind of, you kind of take it for granted, I guess, in a way. And I didn't start learning until like two years ago. And I started just finding that fascinating, just learning another way of communication. Because if you've only grown up with one language in your life for your entire life, you learn so much when just doing a second language. I've been weary. It's funny. People always ask me what language you're going to learn next. First of all, I, I don't even really have a lot of a big desire. I, I think I want to dabble in some other languages eventually, but that's like way down the line because I'm not just trying to like be at a conversational level when it comes to Spanish. Like I'm trying to be like fluent. And I realize with my age, I'll never be like a hundred percent. 
the best I could probably hope for is like 85 to 90, but I'm looking to get to 85 or 90. So I have years and years to go still. And that's the, that's pretty much the track that I'm, that I'm setting off for. But, um, but yeah, it's just been a really fun journey. And you, it's, you know, when learning the language of another country, I, it's, I've heard this, it, this is not said by me. I, I saw this from somebody else, but when learning a separate language, it's like, a key that unlocks a completely different door of opportunities when you travel to some place else. Like if I were to learn French and I went to France, like the opportunities that you now, well, French is, France is, <laughs> French is an interesting one because, you know, they say, uh, I don't know if this is true. I've never had a problem with people being mean to me in France, but they say that the French are pretty particular with their language. Maybe a better way to put it is if you learn French and then you go to uh, Quebec, Canada, uh, or you go to Montreal, you know, then you'll, uh, that'll be a maybe... That'll open more doors than maybe mainland France. I don't know. But, um, you know, German and things like that. Like, I can really see that. Like, you you literally learn to communicate with people on a whole nother level. And you really start to be able to see the world in their eyes. And that's what I think is fun. And obviously, when it comes to Spanish, I've always been close to Spanish. People from Southern California know a lot more Spanish than they than they might know because of just like our city names at the at the end of the day or you've heard you know certain spanish words so there's a little bit of an advantage there which is why i chose that and then also you know spanish is just a huge language so that was the other big reason so um yeah i'm fascinating with the fact that i can drive two hours from la and experience a completely different world and see the world from a completely different perspective um i've always you know i've always loved the food um the climate Mexico is a really big country. It's way bigger than I think a lot of Americans really expect. Um, it, it's you know it's obviously not the size of America, but it's a big country, and every single Mexican state has something completely different going on about it. There's a lot of history here, obviously, with the Spanish Empire uh, as well as with the Aztecs. Love that aspect of it because you know. When it comes to traveling to Mexico, I don't like to go to touristy spots. I don't like to go to Cabo. I've never been to Cabo. I don't like to go to Cancun. Um, I mean, I, would I go to those places again if someone invited me? I would, but I'm not going to seek out those experiences. Um, I'm always looking to, you know, try something. You know, they have these things in Mexico called uh, Pueblos Mágicos, and uh, they are like magic towns is the translation of that, and uh, they... They're just like little fun, little magical parts of Mexico. And you can travel like those are much more interesting to me to travel to. So um, I really like that. Um, it's funny how few Americans I really see here, which is fun. I mean, if you go to the tourist areas, you will see a lot of them. But it's a little bit surprising at how often I go outside and it's like, oh, wow, I am literally the only American. And for me, I love that. That that stuff, <laughs> I really, really like that. Um, so uh, those are just a couple of the reasons. You know, to be honest, if I if I live closer to India, I'd probably be, you know, going to India. Uh, I love the convenience of, of how close Mexico is. And I already have the foundation of, uh, you know, the, this, the language kind of in place because I was learning in high school and things like that. But yeah, I mean, this is just my my thing right now. I was recently, I recently came up across somebody that, um, not not in Mexico, but uh, in the U.S. that was obsessed with Brazil, and that was just his thing. And he had been learning Portuguese for four years, and his his goal was just to go uh, to Brazil. And um, I've actually been hearing a lot of stories about that. Isn't that speed? Isn't <laughs> uh, I show speed basically that? But um, no, that it's funny how often you, you see that. So I think it's a good experience. And I've, I think it's, Europeans are really lucky because they have a lot of choices if they want to be, um, you know, they, they have a lot of different choices and a lot of different directions they can go to. If I'm a German guy and I'm obsessed with uh, Italy, well, that's also like a two hour flight away. That won't be too difficult to get to. I find because I had learned so much about U.S. history throughout, because, you know, they just pound and pound and pound U.S. history. I've learned U.S. history like four or five times throughout my educational career that I'm so done with it. But they teach you nothing about Mexico. And it's crazy. It's really crazy because Mexico's had a fascinating history. And I obviously, I mentioned it probably too many times in my videos. I always love talking Mexican history. 
because it's like, wow, how did I not know about the Mexican Revolution or the uh, um, or the Austrian uh, the Austrian King when during the Mexican Empire or uh, when France tried to take over Mexico? So I always love mentioning that stuff in my videos. Because you think that they would have taught us about this in the U.S., but of course they did not. I don't think I learned a single part. I think I learned about the Mexican-American War and a little bit about Texas and things like that, you know, when Mexico and, and Texas were at war and stuff like that. But um, besides that, not not much. So, um, yeah, it really just comes down to just completely uh, immersing myself. Unfortunately for my, you know, for the other northern neighbor that I have, uh, being an American, uh, the US, in the U.S., um, I'm, for the reason, for that reason, because I love the culture shock, because I love diving into a completely new world, I'm having a hard time wanting to travel to Canada. I'm sure I'll do it one day, but it's difficult because I just don't. There's, I just don't have a whole lot of interest in it. Um, I do have interest in going to Montreal because of like what I said, the French part. That seems fascinating. That seems really weird and different. Um, but you know, I'm closest to Vancouver. I just have not, yeah, I've had opportunity to go to Vancouver recently and I just couldn't get myself to do it because I don't have the, the drive to really, you know, I don't know, but who knows? Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe one day I will go to Canada and I'll be like, oh, wow, this is, there's no way I'm going to get the culture shock that, I, shock that I'm receiving here in Mexico, but maybe there will be some interesting aspects of Canada that I never fully realized um, because I'm realizing different and new things that I never knew about Mexico literally every day here. So that's why I, I, I come down here a lot and why I like to immerse myself uh, in that aspect. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe I just need to go to Canada. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.